Hello and welcome to the Fraser Hat Yai Show. Um, this is going to be a video, my first video interviewing people in Bangkok that I think have something interesting to talk about. And uh, today I'm with Mark. Uh, Mark is setting up a really interesting charity project here in Thailand uh, and outside of Thailand as well. So I'll talk to him about that today and uh, see what he's got to say. So um, Mark, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yes, hello everyone, my name is Mark, I'm from the United Kingdom and I'm a, a teacher, and or training to be a teacher I should say really, and I've been in Thailand for three years, it was originally meant to be for six weeks, and I ended up being kidnapped, and I'm still here three years later. Okay, so Max recently set up a charity called EWF Global, and its aim is to help students who can't afford to study um, get well, be able to study a little bit. So can you tell me a little bit about, about this project? Yeah, basically EWF Global, uh, or www.ewf.global, uh, was de is designed for uh, students, that, students that need English, which is basically in developing countries, uh, after they finish school to get work. Uh, most of the money, or to break the cycle of poverty, is in tourism. That's the quickest way for them to break the cycle. If they work on farms, they get minimal, minimal, minimal wage if they're lucky, squalid conditions. Uh, so yeah, it's quite important uh, having a, uh, a second language as English, for example, really, really important for uh, developing country students, boys and girls likewise. Um, so it was designed for a lot of the students in uh, Asian countries, the, the ones with money don't appreciate what their parents have given them necessarily and they don't take it serious. But often I see the uh, students, the underprivileged students or the poor students, they, they know they need it. They know it's necessary to, to survive. And I often look at them and think, I see them wanting and trying to speak to me in English and I think, you know, I could help you if I had the time, and if I had the passive income, if you like, not to, not to have to work servicing the students that have money, um, it would be more, more beneficial to them. I'd feel, I'd, I'd feel better in myself that I'm teaching someone that really wants it and needs it. So what, what made you decide to, to get involved and to start this project? Uh, was it something you saw in Thailand or just something that came to you? Um, it was basically, I've wanted to do charity work for five years, but you always, you always tend to put it off and say, ah, the ne next year, after the next academic year, or the next paycheck, or something. You always have a reason not to do it, or not to get involved. And then eventually I just said, no, I see so many people that are desperate for help, and they can't afford it, and it's like, just do it, and then hope the money comes in afterwards. That was basically it. it was, uh, just do it. And in the, in the past, when I've done things like that, you, you'd be amazed that it all falls into place when you just when you just get it when you just decide to do it and make it happen, if you like. Um, I think people also try and come on board as well, like yourself. You know, you 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 out of the blue, you said, hey, hey, maybe I can help you. you yeah. Know? And people try if you just do it. No, because it's actually a project. I was thinking of doing something very similar. And then uh, I noticed your your your, uh, your thing on Facebook, and I thought, wow, this is this is a great idea. I'd rather I'd rather just instead of going and setting something up myself, I can help someone who's who's already got the same mindset as me and who's already trying to do something like that already. Um, you're going to do something with online teaching as part of the project. Um, I think it's great now because internet is becoming more accessible in different parts of the world. So this is a way we can get education to kids in more rural areas. Uh, can you talk more on that, on what you plan on doing with online teaching? Well, the online teaching idea is probably a little bit more about um, future plans, whereas with the uh, 2018 humanitarian and educational project is going to be this year. Uh, the idea will be is eventually when we have enough money to set up is to put uh, maybe projectors, screens, or just paint the wall white, whatever the case may be, um, to put projector screens and internet connections in places and generate little clubs in the poorer uh, regions or locations that students can go to who really want to learn and who need to learn. So that would be the idea. 
and they can maybe imagine maybe it's a school or a temple and they can go there and we just have to provide a teacher there are some uh, charities for example there's one in Vietnam that will uh, send a teacher up to the district but they only send a teacher up for one or two weeks because it's in the countryside yeah and there's not many teachers that want to be in the countryside volunteer teachers want to be in the countryside working for free for two weeks whereas if we just target them online we can provide a teacher to one two three four five schools at the same time from the comfort of the city or okay, so if you can if you can get the school set up with the equipment first so they're able to access the internet and and take online lessons then you can provide them as, as long as you you're able to generate the funds you can provide them with as many as many lessons as you as you're able to do without and without having to find a teacher who's willing to go to the to that rural area there are teachers willing to give an hour uh, you know an hour a day or you only need one and one one teacher one hour another teacher another day another hour for example or 30 minute classes and uh, what the school needs is and it's not that expensive they need a projector which is approximately three four hundred uh, dollars let's say talking dollars uh, they need a laptop which is, again is only two three hundred dollars uh, and internet connection probably for a thousand dollars for a whole year you could provide the, the resources that they need uh, to to start doing online courses to get them started and then afterwards it's cheaper then afterwards as providing there's no mal malfunctions on the equipment you just need an internet it's stable internet connection yeah. and things like a, a, a wireless mouse it's more interactive for the children but a wireless mouse is probably not even maybe probably not even maybe probably about 100, 200 baht, you can get wireless mouses now. A couple of hundred baht. Yeah. yeah. So it's that, it's that the equipment is actually cheap. It's the insta it's the money to put the installations in. And I, like I said, there's many teachers who, when I when I, I do use a site called Volunteer Match, many teachers volunteer wanted to be an SL teacher, English, you know, English as second language teacher. The teachers are not the problem. It's the, uh, the money for the resources for each school. So, okay. so um. What are your plans for the next, say, three to six months with this project? What are, what are your targets? What do you, well, you hope to achieve? To, uh, this is going to be the first uh, 2018 humanitarian and uh, educational project. It starts uh, on the 14th of May uh, this year. And uh, it's going to be for a children's home in, on the borders of Burma and Thailand. And they're actually stateless children, which means they don't belong to anybody. Nobody will give them papers. Uh, they were originally in the jungles and then they set up in a little village. The Thai government was good enough to say, okay, if you build in that area, it's free, uh, use it. They did. They're almost self-contained, little, little or no support from outside. And um, they, yeah, they, they've done everything. They built their own wooden bridge. This bridge is the uh, Mon, uh, Mon Bridge, is the longest uh, bridge in uh, Thailand. Wooden bridge, man-made wooden bridge. And it's the second longest in the whole world. And it was made by the community. They came together, these mixtures of different culture people, most of them don't have a passport. They're not allowed out of their province, believe it or not. And they, again, they, they, they make their money or they, they're self-sufficient because they sell stuff to the tourists. These children from the children's home dedicate one or two hours um, uh, a week at their time there's 140, 150 of these orphans if you like and uh, they dedicate and they work towards working in the bakery, the vegetarian restaurant and you, they, they do face painting, they yeah. put the face paint on the bridge well, what amazed me was when we actually went to uh, see, the, um, see the see it in action if you like and couldn't believe the honesty of these kids you know, the, 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 everything they, they've got they work for there's no stealing, there's no theft there's no pickpocketing. Everything they've, they've achieved and every building that they've got has been built through making clothes, bakery, um, farming, self-sufficient farming. It's just amazing to see. And, you, and we went there thinking we were going to help them and teach them things. And we were like looking around thinking, oh my gosh, they make tea from butterfly, was it butterfly, um, butterfly flower tea? And they get so it from, made from ground butterflies, and they get it, but, from, and they get it from the forest. These these flowers, and then they sell them. You know, and they're beautiful tea. I tried it. And I thought, oh my God, I don't know who's teaching who. <laughs> That's it's very interesting, especially in those rural areas. They've got 
those kind of skills that are um, kind of lost in the rest of the world now. Uh, so, people, I saw the project and straight away I, I put in a small donation while I could and uh, because I thought it was a great project. But um, a lot of people want to know where the money's going. So, if you were, if you were able to raise your first $1,000, uh, where would that money go and what, what would you do? The, the, the first one will definitely be is, uh, for the 2018 project, which is for the resources for that. Which is a, uh, I have a laptop, so we're using stuff that we already have from teaching experience, for example. But things like a projector, a proje uh, uh, the idea is an Epson uh, LCD projector, um, which is a, not the, the top of the range, but a mid range one. Enough to do the job. Right? Enough to do the job effectively for a long time without likelihood that it's going to break down. Yeah. So we could buy one for maybe maybe uh, 80, 80 dollars if we like. We're going to talk about replace it every three months. What's but, the point? But you need very low light in the room to allow it to be able to be displayed. And it's all about lumens and it's all about lamp light because the lamps can cost the same amount as the actual projector. So for, for the first one is projector. The other one is things like uh, we, we use for sending the teacher and the teacher being able to remain there for longer because one of the th things I noticed when we were there or one of the deficiencies in the center is the volunteers don't stay long enough and these children get um, get attached to the volunteer but they become very transient so they're only there for six months so if we put the teacher there for longer which we're going to start on the 14th of May put a teacher there for longer or a volunteer if you like volunteer teacher to help them gets involved and uh, that, that, that will contribute, and there's things like resources like uh, printed printing, for example, the day-to-day -day runnings, paper, uh, arts and crafts material to help with projects, things like that, um, and like I said, the, uh, the internet connection, and all these sort of things that will help keep it fun, make it interesting, inspire the kids to want to learn, Pro even watching things like on YouTube, the great one I find with the kids to inspire them is get them hooked on things like Fireman Sound series, almost the tank engine, and they'll watch it time and time again. And when they're relaxed, their brain absorbs more of the English, and they, they, they see the practical application of English, etc. really helps them a lot. Yeah. So yeah, like what you said about one of the problems being they get attached to the, the teacher and they don't stay too long. I think that's something that online teaching would help, would help with as well. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not physical, uh, you're not physically there, but if you can get them set up with internet and uh, and a device to, to study online, even cheap tablets now they can use, like about 20, 20, 30 dollar tablets are able to, um, if they can get an internet connection, kids can study online on those. And uh, yeah, and it, it means that once that teacher le leaves, maybe they could continue to support the school uh, online as well. So I, I think. It becomes sustainable. Then. You know, yeah. we, we can put a, get some volunteer teachers to give individual classes one to one to the students we encounter who are really passionate about learning, who want to, um, you know, because they already have the laptop installed, they have the projector, they have the space to study, and then we can, uh, so, yeah, we can expand the project. And then we'd like to move on to other projects that are similar. There are many, many orphanages in Southeast Asia alone, let alone talk about China and Russia and other places. Who we could also then move on and start installing the same systems uh, first hand directly and then be able to maybe do it remote and start working remotely once the infrastructure is in there. So, yeah. so um, uh, let's finish off with one more question. Um, what are your long term goals for, the, for this project? Uh, I know you want to be able to do this full time and put all your effort into this, right? Uh, but what, what are your goals in to say the next? two years on this project? Well, I think the best motto is uh, uh, reach everybody, every time, everywhere. It's yeah. my motto. Is I'd like to be able to, anyone that needs help in relation to learning, doesn't matter whether it's maths, English, science, we can find teachers for all these things. We just need to put in the infrastructure to be able to reach the children. And if we can reach them, it's like whether it doesn't matter if it's a school, it could be a temple, don't really care. I've taken as many restrictions as I can. Uh, it's died off. Oh, okay, we'll just do it online and we'll just do it for children who are students and we'll just do it for the poor kids in maybe Thailand. And it was like, hang on a minute. Why just not take all restrictions out? Just say underprivileged students, people who don't have the money, who want to do, make their, their lives better, who want to break the cycle of uh, poverty. And 
let's forget where. It doesn't matter where in the world it is. Yeah. It doesn't matter what age. Just people who need help full stop. No, I like I like that I like that concept, that idea and uh, especially not caring about where you're from or what country because especially for the project that you're gonna get involved with the kids on the border then and neither Thai or Burmese. Um, like there's no not many people offering these guys any support or help so um, I think this is a, a great project. Um, if guys watching want to support you and get involved how can they how can they donate you have a, a Patreon account and uh, yeah we have a Patreon I'm not sure I suppose say that right Patreon, Patreon or Patreon, Patreon I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure. www.patreon.com okay uh, and then EWF Global all one word EWF Global uh, no, no full stop and we also have a website which is the easiest one you can actually go to the Patreon site from there which is www.ewf.global G-L-O-B-A-L uh, for example and there you can basically find different ways we even have the we or not we decided to set up was an old coin a Bitcoin you could actually put uh, okay so uh, the guys who watch my Bitcoin video and uh, I know the market's a bit low right now but um, if you want to donate in cryptocurrencies as well you can um, yeah so uh, that's pretty much it um, uh, I hope you found that video interesting and if you do want to support I do uh, employ you to, to check out the, the links in the description with all the all the pages that he just told me there and uh, yeah thanks for watching is there anything you want to say to finish off this video? No, nope. thank you in advance for any help you can give it doesn't always have to be money obviously money goes a long way because we can like I said install the infrastructure but any contributions help you're welcome to contact us via um, the, uh, via, our, uh, via our contact us page on ewf.global um, even things like yourself uh, Fraser or helping like, with make, uh, building awareness telling your friends about it following us on Facebook www.facebook.com and then slash educating free unfortunately EWF, EWF Global was taken but educating free but you can find that link on our website also so any any help, any infrastructure help, any donations. Some people gave some tablets and phones, for example. Teachers yeah. gave some tablets and phones. We 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 pass them on so we could do online classes with students in remote locations. Sometimes that's all they need. Yeah, just a phone. Uh, so I can put an address too if people want to actually send donations. So yeah, if, if you're able to help uh, in any way with with. Fin fin in financially by through one of the pages below or even just sending s s something like tablets or or um, learning material um, that would be great too and if you're not able to help it would be awesome if you could just share this video or share any of the links below on social media um, to try and build up this project uh, that's it thanks for watching and uh, until the next time stay awesome thank you Fraser all right cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to edit something else decent out of that.